and good morning. It's currently just after 5 a.m. Way too early for me, but I'm back here at my hometown airport about to head over to Baltimore on Southwest Airlines to catch their first flight down to Miami International Airport. If you've been following my channel for a while, then chances are you've already seen my video on that. To fly it though, I needed to get there first, and that's where the herb will come in handy today. As usual with Southwest, check-in process was very quick and simple. I didn't check in any luggage, so I technically didn't even need to go over there, but I just like printing out paper boarding passes because you never know, and I like keeping them. After a very empty security line and about a minute ride on one of Pitt's two people movers, I'm now inside the airside terminal, which houses all gates here within four concourses named A, B, C, and D. I may be a bit biased as I'm from here, but this center core air mall and food court is, from what I've found, one of the best in the country. If only all the restaurants were open consistently. Since Chick-fil-A was closed this early, I ended up grabbing some breakfast at Dunkin' instead. We'll be departing today from the A concourse, which is home to United, Southwest, Air Canada, and Boutique Air. But don't take my word for it if you're watching this in the distant future, as the airport does change airlines around a lot. At this point, I still had no idea I'd be flying the one and only Herb D. Keller jet today, nor was I expecting this flight to mean much to me. But as soon as I saw that classic retro gold, my mood flipped upside down. For those that don't know, Herbert Keller was the founder of Southwest Airlines and is one of the biggest reasons why the airline is so successful today. He revolutionized air travel in the US with bringing low fares, only using a single aircraft type for the most part, and eliminating the extras of flying, all while providing a unique Southwest experience they still have today. This retro jet is painted in the original desert gold livery and is named after their founder. Southwest's boarding style is also truly one of a kind. There is open seating on board, so passengers line up by group and boarding position instead. Now, due to the pandemic, they boarded groups of 10 people instead of the usual 30. Plus, seats on board were limited to 66% capacity. But November 2020 was the last month Southwest did this. The ride to Baltimore today is a Boeing 737-700, one of three models of the 737 Southwest owns. All of their planes are equipped with all economy class cabins, with this jet having a total of 143 seats on board. I ended up choosing 23F for this flight to bother as least amount of people as possible with my filming. <laughs> well, I guess it didn't work. While this is Southwest's older product, they are still quite comfortable with really good legroom for a low-cost carrier. I don't know why, but I always enjoy a little padding or squishiness to the armrests, like these have. All Southwest seats are also reclinable, which I actually might use on this flight since there's no one behind me, or next to me, or really anywhere around me. As for the rest of the seat features, you can find the safety card in the small seat back pocket in front of you, along with a barf bag. Up top are the classic 737 overhead controls that really give you a bit of nostalgia from the late 90s and early 2000s. Boarding process finished up pretty quickly since the load's so light, so before we knew it, it was time to push back almost simultaneously with the Denver flight to our right.
This morning's flight will only be 38 minutes of flying time, cruising at an altitude of just 23,000 feet, or 7,010 meters. Just barely enough time to even cruise before we have to start descending again. The route will take us over the Appalachian Mountains and down into BWI's Runway 10. Something I've long liked about Southwest is their in-flight entertainment offerings. When you click Southwest Wi-Fi in settings, you'll be redirected to their homepage where you can purchase Wi-Fi for $8 or activate free texting on board, check where you are on the flight map, my personal favorite, see your flight's info, your destination's weather, and of course, find their rather decent collection of free entertainment. Every time I fly the Love Airline, there's usually around 50 movies to watch, 17 live TV channels, and a smaller amount of TV shows, podcasts, and music playlists. Whatever I tried also did work very well with no connection problems. One additional thing you'll find is Southwest drink offerings, which, due to the short nature of this flight, won't be happening today. I have flown this route probably the most in recent memory, and I think we only got drinks maybe once or twice. Before we knew it, we were already descending. It's too bad today was a cloudy day because seeing the Appalachian Mountain chains from the sky is always super cool, but you can check out some of my other videos between these two cities if you really want to see some clear flights. The tray table, before I forget, is extendable, equipped with a cup groove, and is nicely sized in general. I cannot tell you how weird it is looking out the window every time on this plane and seeing gold instead of blue. It's pretty strange. And speaking of strange, what the f just happened here? It just broke. Oh no. Yeah. As I was putting my seatbelt on for landing, it just popped out. I tried fixing it, but we were already nearing final approach and I was getting nowhere. Probably should have switched to the middle seat, but I need to film. So I tied it best I could and hung on for the ride. And just like that, seatbeltless me made it to the ground, safe and sound. To sum up the flight, like I said, I've done this route too many times to count, but this experience is probably the most memorable one. Not only was I all alone in the back half of the plane, but I got to fly aboard the jet named after Southwest's founder, something you have a 1 in 736 or a 0.14% chance of riding. Even though there was no service on board and the aircraft wasn't equipped with Southwest Best product this morning, I still felt that Southwest experience. The crew were all friendly, yes, even the nice lady, flight attendant that didn't want to be on camera. We also arrived into BWI here nearly 20 minutes early. I enjoyed the quick scroll through their IFE, but most of all the awesome sunrise. By the way, this is the first official video of my new format travel vlogs. As time goes on, you'll see me talking on camera more in each video as I slowly shift away from the full flight experience format that I've been doing for years. A lot of these flights are still filmed intended to be in that format, so for the time being, they'll mostly be voiced over. But let me know what you think below. And as far as Southwest Airlines, Mr. Keller built a pretty good one. With that, 
welcome to BWI, where I would now continue down to Miami on Southwest's inaugural flight into MIA. Be sure to check out this video if you haven't yet. And as for the one you're watching right now, thanks for watching it and catch you on the next one.